Well, I'm Osman Kent. I, currently, I'm the venture partner at Atlantic Bridge Capital. We are a deep technology venture company based in London, Dublin, Palo Alto and Shanghai. And so we invest in deep technology companies, but I wasn't always a venture partner. So previously I was an entrepreneur. I built four or five successful companies. The, the most famous of them was 3D Labs, which was the, the father of 3D graphics. At one time, it was a billion dollar company in NASDAQ in America. And so I sold that in 2002 and since then built other companies. But in between, I wasted eight years doing music. <laughs> well, music was always my first love, uh, but I was really never good at it. So, uh, so technology brought the money. And so in 2002, I decided to turn my back to technology for a while and went back to music and started doing crazy things like starting a record label, build a recording studio, etc. And wasted millions, but had a great time uh, with a rock and roll lifestyle. And, but I went back to technology in 2010. Well, it, it was an accident. I became an entrepreneur as an accident. And the, because when I left Turkey, as you said, the, my father had a small company and his business would go up and down all the time. So I said, I just want a secure nine to five job. And so two years later, uh, two years later after graduation, the, with a fellow Turk in England, who is still my business partner, we started this company totally by accident. So that's how I got sucked into being an entrepreneur. The rest is uh, history. And I think it was Bill Gates who said, success makes a bad teacher, as I said earlier on. And so it is impossible to learn from other people's successes. But very early on, I learned from, started learning from other people's failures. And the big failure, for let me give you one example. The, I'm a big believer in serendipity. And this applies to business life as well as one's personal life. And when I was younger, in my 20s, these extraordinary things would happen and, and I would never notice that these were extraordinary moments and I would ignore them. The, in my 30s, I learned not to ignore these. And as a result, the 3D Labs was formed because it was one smoking moment in a car park in America. I realized that the meeting I had just left was an improbable meeting. So I had to change the whole course of what I was doing. And that's how 3D Labs was born. So the, uh, I think that the year was 1986. Uh, we were exhibiting uh, at bench, as Benchmark Technologies, two companies before 3D Labs in America. And these two random guys turn up at our booth. We had this tiny booth. They, they, uh, we had no money really. And, but we were demonstrating an amazing piece of technology. So the guys looked at this. They said, this is very similar to what we are doing. And so why don't we, the market is not large enough, we should merge. And, but they made then one mistake. They said that they would be the high end and that we would be the low end of the, the offering. The company was Pixar and the people who came to the stand was Ed Catmull and Alvi Ray Smith. And, and we learned, this is not on the video, we learned at that uh, conference that they were in the process of raising money and one of the investors was going to be a UK company. So we went, when we back, came back to England, we went straight to that investment company and we said, you are making a mistake, we have the better technology. So as a result, they, they chose us, they didn't invest and Pixar was forced to exit hardware business. The advice for startups, that's, a, that's, that's a too big, big a question, but 
The first thing is it's a journey that will totally upset your personal life. So you have to be cognizant of that before embarking on, on that journey. The, I, you know, my, my marriage was upset twice along the, along the way. It's recovered, but the, the, because you are never there. Even if you are there physically, your mind is never there. And even today, my wife looks at me and says, when we are driving a car, you are writing an email in your mind, aren't you? <laughs> so that, that's, that, that's what happens. There, there's no work time, private time, it's work time at all times. But you don't see it as work. That, that's your personal identity. The other thing is, the, <clears throat> as I said in, 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 in the talk, is people will tell you that you are crazy. And that's probably a good thing. The, because you need that degree of craziness to ignore all the, the negative aspects that come your way, along the way. You just have to just go in a particular direction. You mustn't be too silly because there comes a time you say, perhaps they were right. <laughs> and and you, so you need to fail quickly as well. So if the, that's one of the most important things a startup needs to learn. You need to fail quickly, otherwise it become, you become in limbo, in zombie land. The, the, and one final advice, and, and I lived through this many times myself. You set yourself an objective, right? The many people here, they probably want to be millionaires. I wanted to see my company's ticker symbol on New York's you know, Times Square coming. The pleasure lasted for 10 seconds. So then it becomes empty and you become directionless. You say, okay, so you have to make sure that the, the, the thing that you enjoy is the journey. And, and that's the, the biggest thing with hindsight that gave me the pleasure. It wasn't always easy, but the end point, when you reach it, the, you'll be disappointed. The, the, there are probably six, seven criteria, but the, 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 we are a deep tech investor. And so for us, the number one thing that we look at is the team. And the reason for that is, most people don't talk about it, but 50% of startups actually pivot after two, three years. So the initial technology, the initial market you are targeting, important though that they are, you need a capable team who is capable of pivoting. So, so past successes and past failures are important. The, and remember I said past failures because the people learn a lot more from their failures, as, as I always say. The second is the, the market size and, and whether it's a believable market. And, but that's why you need to articulate what I call the promised land. Do you say, okay, if everything was working your way and you had hundreds of millions of dollars of investment, what would the promised land be? So investors don't like investing in companies where the promised land is small or it's not a big enough story. Because it's called venture capital because you are taking a risk, it's a venture, but for the returns to be big, you need to tar be targeting a very large market. Then of course, as deep technologists, the, we need to understand the technology and the technology has to have a lot of legs and depth the, and it needs to be protectable so that other people can't easily copy and enter into a market. But the benefits of deep technology companies, are, there's a secondary benefit, is a number of deep technology companies, you can still exit them, sell them for hundreds of millions even when the commercial model has failed. You can't do that with an app. So that, that value of deep technology is very, very important. I mean, I lived through this 
the, all the companies, Benchmark, DuPont Pixel, 3D Labs, and I never talk about it. 3, 3D Labs was sold again in 2012 to Intel. It was always the same company, just kept pivoting. But the, the, and, and whether it was a commercial success or not didn't matter. The value in that deep technology and the great team remained for 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important consideration. This is my first time in Startup Istanbul, uh, but I'm no stranger to technology companies in the UK because two years ago I became chairman of a, a great Turkish-based uh, technology company called Pointer. Uh, they're headquartered in the UK, but all the R&D is done here. That was my first exposure of the great ecosystem that exists here. I'm now the chairman of another uh, similar company called e-tron who is doing autonomous vehicles and again all the R&D is being done here but this particular event is mind-boggling because 160,000 applications it's an improbable number I'm also the judge for a similar event in the UK called Deep, Te Deep Technology Summit and we get 300 applicants. Mm. And, and you get uh, 25 finalists from there. And that event was actually last week. The, and four of the companies, of the, the 25 finalists, were Turkish companies. Wow. That's, that's, that's amazing. That's inspiring uh, and, and amazing. The other thing that I found amazing and it opened my eyes that the how much startup energy there is outside Turkey in EMA and, 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 and in Asia in, in countries in Jordan I spoke to four companies three companies from from Jordan the I spoke to two companies from Tunisia so those are opportunities and uh, so everyone is trying to replicate the Silicon Valley success. But this is a controversial view, but let, let me say this. The Silicon Valley success is because it accepts the best talent from all around the world. It's not indigenous talent. So few people said interesting things to me. They said, well, we are based in such and such country, but perhaps we should make Istanbul our hub. So they are from North Africa, but perhaps we should start our company in, in Istanbul. So it's not going to be Silicon Valley, but I was thinking perhaps Silicon Bosphorus, Silicon Strait. The, it would be a, a great model for the region, which has different needs, different opportunities. So, and Startup Istanbul, I think, is, is, is a great organization and a way of bringing these people together is brilliantly positioned to take advantage of that. Our investment criteria is, is different. There are many companies I would love to invest, I have seen. The, in fact, one company I met, I think, from India, this company was uh, has created a special kind of grass which can replace plastics in textiles. I said, it's very topical, very extraordinary. The, but for Atlantic Bridge to be able to invest in such opportunities, the, we answer to our limited partners. So our limited partners give us a mandate saying that you can invest US, UK, Europe, China, for example. And so those companies need to incorporate in one of those geographies and find they can do their R&D in Turkey or, or, or wherever. And, and for us, they need to be what's called scale up or, or growth stage. But there are other opportunities too. So there are many investable companies here. They, there are, I've seen, I also met a number of interesting people uh, during the last few days, who mentor such companies to become investable. 
So as an organization, this brings in the, the mentors, the investors and the startups, I think is, is unique. Uh, pot potentially, the, 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 uh, I, I made many bad personal investments, like my music business was, was, was one of them. So other factors prevent me uh, from that, but I think they are a very investable company, the one in Venezuela. Yes. I was very impressed with the, the content I have seen so far and uh, the quality of the companies. But what I would also change, I think, the, I, would, I would love to see more Western European companies come to Startup Istanbul. So it shouldn't be pigeonholed as, as you know, the below Turkey or, or whatever on the, on the globe. I've seen Estonia and Lithuania stuff, but let's have German companies and, and UK companies or French companies come and, and pitch here as well, because it's a great event. And I would like to, to thank to Startup Istanbul and to Burak and, and Asli and for their tenacity and, and for convincing me to come here and I would love to come another year.